We're at season three, episode three for Shield Hero, and this one gets us into book 11, but it's a bit weird because it also goes backward into book 10. And this is something I covered in the first video that I did for this season, if you wanna go check that one out, because I go into way more detail than I'm going to in this one, obviously. And this one honestly doesn't skip much. It only covers about 20% of the 11th book, partially because it takes a chunk out of the 10th book. So this will probably be a pretty short video. So this book actually starts with the stuff that episode two ended on, where Sedina is like all over now, Fumi and Raftalia is like, what's going on and all that. So that's kind of where that came from. And this is kind of where we get the stuff that you see earlier in the episode, where the slaves are actually wanting to be taken by now, Fumi, because you find out there are nobility from other countries who are trying to get with him because they worship him. But it's just funny because you can see here, there's a little thing where a girl gets mad and says, why is that woman okay, but I'm not. And now Fumi says, you're not the kind of slave that I prefer, that's all. And the girl goes, sorry, I'm not a cute little girl. And she starts crying. And this is when now Fumi gets pissed off about it. And we also find out here that Sedina is 23. Not that it really matters that much, but it does come up here. Because now Fumi thinks she's lying and Raftalia says, uh, my parents told me her age at the time, so that would be about right. And at this point, now Fumi's getting pissed off because all the female slaves are asking to be taken by him. So this little girl, he yells at and tells her that if she doesn't tell him who's behind it, he's going to destroy the country that she came from. <laughs> so she gets upset and says her dad made her do it to try to marry the shield hero. And then he kind of lectures her about her need to make her own decisions and not doing everything for her family, like getting married off to a grown man. So Raftalia is getting like exasperated by this point. The slaver is always impressed with him and his kind of business instincts. But Raftalia has a line here where she says, there's no way Mr. Nalfemi would be seduced so easily. It would save me a lot of trouble if it were that simple. Which is a pretty funny line. I'm surprised they didn't keep it in. And they shared this super briefly, but there's these theranthropes called Lumos, which are pretty much like mole people. And they have one in their village named Emiya, and they find her uncle here. So Nalfemi does take her. And the show, they just show him hugging for like half a second. And at this point, Nalfemi asks what Sedina's relationship is anyway to Raftalia. And you find out that Sedina is a drifter that came from the same place as her parents, and Raptalia's parents kind of took her in and took care of her. So that's why they're so close. And then this is where all the six slaves are when they're on their way to Fole and Atla. So now Fumi gives the six slaves medicine and tells the slaver, like, deduct the cost of the medicine when he buys a slave. And I don't know if you see this briefly in the show or not, because they always show his vision so fast, but Fole is a level 32, and Sedina is a level 98. So when they do their level reset, for Sedina, it's a pretty big deal. But for Fole, it's not really that big of a deal. Because even now, Fumi says he can just go hunting with Philo for a couple days. And you get a little bit of world building here, too, where you find out that the Hakuko or the Tiger Theranthropes or Demi-Humans, whatever you want to call them, were actually thwarting the plans of Trash or the King. And now Fumi's like, that doesn't really mean much. And the slaver says to him that if it weren't for him, Melromark probably wouldn't even exist, which is pretty high praise, obviously. And they make a little comment the slavers do about how a Hakuko wouldn't be a match for Sedina in the water. And she didn't realize that they knew who she was. And so you're finding out that she's a superior type of demi-human also. And here's an interesting little thing I think they cut out of the show. I can see why, but the slavers like, you know, maybe you could separate them and then just tell the brother that she's being cured even after she dies and he'll just keep working for you. And he says one of your party can imitate voices. And then he looks at Philo. So now for me says, Philo, can you imitate voices? Do one of Melty. And then she does it and sounds just like her. So that's just one of those abilities that he wasn't even aware that she had. And this is just a small detail, but now Fumi equips the spirit tortoise shield whenever he gives her the medicine, because for some reason that improves the effects of the medicine. So his different shields have all kinds of abilities, even though it only gets mentioned here and there in the show. They usually just kind of change his shield and don't say much about it. And also Full kind of complains because he's overprotective until now Fumi lets him smell the medicine so he knows it's not poison. And now Fumi's like, I'm buying you regardless, so I can give her the medicine or not. Because he's super overprotective in the book. I mean, obviously he is in the show, but in the book you really see a lot of it. And then we go for a traditional anime trope, and Full kind of has a sister complex, because the sister prays now Fumi. And Sedina and Raftalia are talking, and Raftalia's like, oh, he's just jealous because his sister seems to like you. And he gets all pissy. <laughs> And now Fumi is giving another dose of the medicine to Atla, <laughs> and he's so petty. It says that he shoots full a patronizing look, and then full like grumbles under his breath. But then Atla asks now Fumi to get along with her brother, so 
So once they all teleport back, they kind of address that Atla, even though she's blind, can tell how strong people are and sense things. And this will get explained in more detail later, I'm sure. But this is related to the same power that the Hengen Muso lady uses, which I think they just refer to as life force throughout the story. But that'll get explained later anyway. It's not really a spoiler. But this also is kind of where in the show you see the village is kind of being built up. And this was all covered in book 10, which again was my first video for this season if you want more detail about that. And then we get some of this dynamic a little bit more between Fol and Atla, where Atla asks Naofumi to change the bandages, and Fol says he can do it. And Naofumi thinks to himself he has a sister complex, but then he explains that the ointments and stuff will be more effective if he does it, and Atla says that she wants Naofumi to do it. And there's also a little thing in here where her skin's getting itchy because it's being essentially grown back. It looked like it was super burnt up before. And then here's just some artwork of Atla, like having her bandages slowly removed as she's healing. And now Fumi refers to her as like beautiful, like a doll, like a porcelain doll. And I think he guesses her age at about 12-ish. And we get another little funny thing in here where now Fumi is trying to be like menacing and evil because Atla is saying that she wants to talk to him. And now Fumi says, I'm making soldiers out of the villagers, soldiers that will blindly follow my every command. In due time, you and your brother too will happily charge forth into the jaws of death. <laughs> but before you can finish it, Raftalia cuts him off because she's always a little bit more serious than him and putting a stop to it. And this is where you get the scene of Atla being able to stand up and Foles like tearing up because she can actually walk back to their place now after talking to Naofumi. And this is also kind of where you get like the dynamic between them where Atla's throwing a tantrum because she wants to be with Naofumi and Foles being jealous and then Sedina is flirting with him and Naofumi's like go away like go help the other slaves and go to bed. And they skip this detail. Well they've kind of altered it for the anime which I'm kind of glad but in the book Atla sneaks out at night and then shows up at Naofumi's door and she's like I want to sleep with you and Naofumi's like where's your brother and she's sneaking out when he goes to sleep and he just tells her to go sit in Raftalia's bed and this is where they talk a little bit like you see in the show but Naofumi even says to himself like he finds it a little bit frightening that she'll just do whatever he says and he feels like if he said anything to her she would comply and obviously it's like a one-sided crush but you know it's still a weird dynamic they have that I'm glad the show has toned down and in the show she just kind of drops this line where she says i want to be your shield and now fumi seems like amused but in the book it's more of a conversation where she's like you know you're protecting everyone you're raising all the villagers they're kind of like chicks under your wing looking to leave their nests and that sort of thing and now fumi's thinking to himself that he doesn't mind defending raftalia and philo and melty and the queen because he cares about them so it doesn't really seem like a big deal to him so she dozes off and now Fumi takes her back to her and Foles' room and now Fumi's like, you need to stop letting her slip out. She just showed up at my door saying she wants to sleep with me. And Fole freaks out. He's like, she what? That means Atla. No. And he's like super upset. And then now Fumi's upset because he's like, you think I'd do that? And then Fole obviously is like, oh, you mean she's not attractive? And then now Fumi says, you're being difficult. I don't have any interest in romance. And Fole calls now Fumi a liar. He's like, Nadia was hanging all over you, and you're just surrounded by women everywhere. And then Naofumi gets frustrated because he's like, I can't deny any of that stuff. And then he says, they could all be men. It doesn't matter to me. And Fole's like, oh, like, oh no, what are you saying? And then Fole turns pale and starts backing away. And Naofumi's like, oh, I'm sure he thinks I'm gay now. And then Fole goes, I'm not into that kind of thing. Get away from me. And Naofumi goes, neither am I. And then he's kind of thinking to himself like how annoying he is. And that's sort of where this one ends off. You can see they kept pretty much everything because they didn't cover very much, which is nice because that's how the first season was. But I'm assuming we're going to get some pretty big jumps here in the next couple episodes. And they did have that little scene with Trash, and he looks at Atla, and you can tell he's upset. And that will all get explained probably episode four, I'm guessing. So I'll leave that for the next one. All right, if you're still here, like and subscribe and all that shit. See ya. Thanks.